हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर जसवीन कौर फ्रॉम यूनिवर्सिटी बिजनेस स्कूल गुरु नानक देव यूनिवर्सिटी अमृतसर टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक ऑन मॉड्यूल इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ पीपल इन सर्विसेज मार्केटिंग फ्रॉम द पेपर सर्विसेज मार्केटिंग आफ्टर कंप्लीटिंग दिस मॉड्यूल यू शुड बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ सर्विस एम्प्लॉयज एंड इन डेप्थ नॉलेज of the role of customer interfacing service deliverers understanding that service employees play varied roles in the service production process and as an employee of the organization as most services are labor intensive the employees of the organization will have a big impact on the organization success service employees are so important to the customers and to the firm's competitive positioning because the frontline employees build up or they directly contact with the customers we can say the role of the frontline employee is number 1 it is the core power of the product often the service employee is the most visible element of the service delivers the service and significantly determines the service quality the service employee is the service firm in the eyes of the customer for example i am a customer of icici bank for me who is the bank people it is the person who is dealing with the bank i am not dealing with chanda kochar i am dealing with mr x as the customer service manager in icici bank for me the role played by mr x in icici bank will did make me determine if this bank is good or not so the contact employee in this service there is nothing else but the efficiency and professionalism of the contact employee will build up the image of the service so the contact employee is the service firm for the customers for example in most personal and professional services like hair cutting child care the contact employee provides the entire service we prefer suppose we talk of an example here that i prefer to go to one hair cutter than to the hair, another hair cutter because it is the efficiency of that person which determines yes this organization is better than that organization similar can be other cases third important aspect of service employee is it is the organization in the eyes of the customer even if the contact employee does not perform the service entirely he or may she still personally or personify the firm in the eyes of the customer the service employee is the brand in the for the customer frontline employees and the service they often become core part of the brand the employees determine whether the brand promise is delivered or not the next point in discussing is affects sales sales personnel often are crucially important for generating sale in cross sales and up sales so the people who are involved the service employees or the service provider or the people who are involved in providing service have the owners of generating sales so cross selling and up selling next role of service employee is to determine productivity frontline employees have heavy influence on the productivity of frontline operations next about the service employee is it is a marketer in the eyes of the customer as the contact employees represent the organization and can directly influence customer satisfaction they perform the role of marketers some service employees may also perform more traditional selling roles role of service employee service employees are required to perform a variety of roles in the service organizations employees who are involved in service production process need to perform the following roles first product designer the basic service package formulated by service organization serves as basic input for service employee service employees should ascertain each specific customer 
requirement and design a distinctive service product by taking into consideration the resources and competences of the service organization. Another role of service employee is that of a performer. Service employees are the performers in the service production process. They have to interact with uncontrollable elements and extract quality performance by influencing customers to get involved in the process to be an effective performer. Next role is that of a technician. Some services require the use of equipment and tools. The service employees who possess the skills to operate such equipment is required for such purpose to use those skills. Next role of the service employee is that of an associate. Service employees and service consumers together produce service. The expected role of an employee is to associate with the customer and produce quality service. The next role of a service employee is that of a friend. A service employee has to play the role of a friend with consumers as well as co-employees in a team. Every employee of the service organization should respond to customer needs positively. The next role of service employee is that of empathizer. Service consumers feel comfortable and perceive better quality when contact employees are empathetic. Service employees should have the patience and inclination to be empathetic towards customers. The next role of service employee is that of an assurer. For the consumer, contact employees are the representatives of the company. So the service employees Words and actions should reflect the assurance to consumers. Boundary spanning rules. Now let's know who are boundary spanners. The frontline employees or the customer contact employees are known as boundary spanning. Why they are called as boundary spanners or why they are called performing boundary spanning rules? As we discussed earlier, the customer contact employee is interacting with the service customer. Their personality, their capability, their performance will build up the image of the service form. So their boundary spanning role is evaluated by the customer. The frontline service employees are referred to as boundary spanners because they operate at the organization's boundary. Boundary spanners provide a link between the external customers and the environment and internal operations and processes and the facilities which are being provided to them by the organization and delivering the service to the customer. So they are the linkage between the customer and the organization. Motivating support staff or personnel to perform consistent high quality work is important for the success of the firm. The boundary spanner's role is very, very critical. The boundary spanners or the customer care employees or the customer contact employees, if they are not motivated, if they do not feel satisfied in the organization, if they are not properly trained, they are not likely to satisfy the customer. They are not likely to convince the customer. So the role is very, very critical. If a dry cleaner does not get customer clothes screen, it does not matter how pleasant the customer contact person was to them. So we need to understand the role of boundary spanners as critical for the success of the service firms. In designing service jobs firm, firms must be aware of five important motivational job characteristics. These characteristics are first, skill variety. It is the degree or range of abilities required by an employee to do a job. In addition to the skills needed to perform the actual service, Customer contact employees must have the ability to interact with people. The next level of characteristic is task identity. It is a degree that a job has identifiable units of work with visible outcomes. Task significance. It is the degree of impact an employee perceives his or her job has on lives of others inside or outside the organization. The next characteristic is that of autonomy. It is a degree of freedom and discretion an employee has in his or her work design. 
The next is feedback. It is a degree of direct and clear information an employee receives from superiors concerning the effectiveness of his or her performance. Sources of conflict. Frontend employees often face interpersonal and inter-organization conflicts on the job. Their frustration and confusion can lead to stress, job dissatisfaction, diminished ability to serve customers. Frontline employees have to deal with these many conflicts. The first conflict is that of person role conflict. Service staff may have conflicts between what their job requires and their own personalities, self-perception and beliefs. For example, the job may require staff to smile and be friendly even to rude customers. Person role conflict also arises when employees are required to wear specific clothing or change some aspect of their clearance to conform to the job requirements. For example, a young lawyer just out of school may feel an internal conflict with his new role with his employer which requires him to get his hair cut or trade his casual clothes with a three-piece suit. Next conflict is that of organization-client conflict. Customer contact personnel must attend to both operational and marketing goals. They are expected to delight customers who take time, yet they have to be fast and efficient at operational tasks. On top of that, they are often expected to do selling, cross-selling and upsell. The organization-client conflict is greatest when the employees believe the organization is wrong in its policies and must decide whether to accommodate the client and risk losing a job or follow the policies. Third conflict is the inter-client conflict. Sometimes conflict occurs for boundary spanners where incompatible expectations and requirements arise from two or more customers. These situations occur more often when service provider is serving customers in turn or it is serving many customers simultaneously. When serving many customers at a time, employees often find it difficult or impossible to serve full range of needs of a group of heterogeneous customers. So, boundary spanners or the frontline contact employees, they have to be really dexterous and wise in dealing with different type of customers and so that the customers do not feel let down. Strategies for delivering through people. Complex combination of strategies is needed to assure that service employees are willing and are able to deliver quality services and that they stay motivated to perform in customer-oriented and service-minded ways. These strategies for enabling service promises are referred to as internal marketing, to build a customer-oriented service-minded workforce and organization must have the following strategies. As we are discussing service employees role in delivering to the customers, we need to understand how the role of service employees can be made effective because the success of the service company depends on the performance of the service employees. The first element in this is Hiring the right kind of people. People here means that service employee. So the first element in providing effective service to the customer is that you should have an employee who is best in the talent and we should try to get the best talent from the market. How we can do it? For example, we normally find in the job market Certain companies are preferred over other companies. If I ask a computer science student, the person will say, yes, I would like to go to Wipro, I would like to go to TCS, I would like to go to Infosys. That means these companies have become preferred employees in the eyes of the job market vis-a-vis -vis the computer science students. Why they have become preferred employees? One, the culture is good. Second, the good good packages third the working life is good so that means the service people the employees 
they prefer such kind of companies if the company looks after its employees it becomes a preferred employer so getting the right kind of people from the job market you need to have the best of the employees and for this you have to have a good brand image or employer branding the concept which we all have understood and to understand this that we have to compare the best people and getting for the people our own in house selection process should be good we can get new applications or good applications from the right kind of people but if our internal screening process at the selection stage is not effective if the people who are selecting the employees are not evaluating in an objective manner we again we lose at that end and we not be able to hire the service competent people and good competent employees so hiring the right kind of people is very important second important aspect in delivering the service to the customer by the customer interfacing employees is developing the service employee to deliver service quality we talk about gaps we talk about rater we talk about service quality but how the employees can be made effective in reducing gap in delivering service quality so we have to take into account three things here one the employees which we have hired as we discussed in the last stage that we need to hire the right kind of employees now the employees if we have hired they need to be trained for the technical skills that is the know how how to provide the service as well as the interactive skills that means how to deal with the customer second important aspect which the employees need to understand is that they should promote teamwork they should work in coordination they should work in cooperation with each other third important aspect in customer interfacing employees is empowerment to the employees for example a customer is a high net worth customer of a bank now an employee who is in credits that customer x comes and they wants a loan of about 1 crore from the bank suppose we talk about icici bank and i am a customer of icici bank and i want an a loan of about 1 crore now i will tell the icici bank manager that i want this loan at a credit rate of or at a loan rate of 7.30 because all the other banks are providing at a higher rate although we know the rates are being set up by rbi and it's a standardized rule now that employee will have to make a decision at the spot why because if he does not want to convince the customer the customer may be lost so the employee will say okay i'll just give uh, take a decision immediately and maybe work out to give some kind of balancing rate to the customer maybe if not 8 the which the customer does not want and properly 7.5 which the customer is asking for but something in between so that the customer is not lost the business is not lost so that empowerment the role of decision making that authority of making on the spot decision so that the customer is not lost is important for the service employee now the employee cannot say okay you wait i will ask my regional office okay you wait i will ask my head office and then get back to you so in that time lost the customer may be lost so that empowerment is important to the customer interfacing employee the third important aspect as an important strategy for delivering value by the service employee is giving effective support system to the employee the sir the service employee may be trained he may be efficient he may be dedicated he may be committed but if he is not does not have a proper backup system the backup back end support infrastructure he may not be able to perform well hypothetically again we can talk about an example here a customer comes and makes up a request or puts up a complaint now for that complaint you need to have a database and who provides the database it is not the front end employees it is the back end employees now the front end employee who is dealing with the customer does not is not provided by the database from behind the customer feedback or customer request or customer complaint may not be resolved quickly so in that time what will happen the customer will feel irritated or customer will think that his complaint is not being sought or his request is not being catered to so then in this case 
the customer may feel dissatisfied. So provided needed support systems for affected delivery of service through effective internal processes is important. So technology equipment helps us in measuring the internal service quality and making it effective. The next strategy and the last strategy in delivering value through people that is your service employee is retaining the best people. Now it is very important we talk about customer relationship management and we talk about customer retention. What about employee retention? Every employee who comes to our organization we spend huge amount of money on its training. The employee works with us. He has all the inputs and understanding of our organization vision and objectives. And if the employee is not retained, then what will happen? You will have to again go through the whole process of re-employing someone, again training them so that money is also lost and time is also lost. And the next employee will take time to build up that image. So including our employees in the company's vision Treating the employees as our customers because employee is our first customer. Employee is our internal customer. And employee satisfaction can lead to customer satisfaction. We talk about this today. The first customer, that is the employee, can help us in treating well the next level of customer, that is external customer. So it is the employee satisfaction which leads to customer satisfaction. It is the employee relationship management which helps us in achieving customer relationship management. So we should have effective salary packages, effective reward system for strong service performers and effective motivation for retaining the best talent which we have hired in the earlier stage. So all these strategies we are going to discuss in a frequent discussion in the subsequent module will help us in understanding how the service people can be may become effective service deliverers and building up the image of the service firm. Strategies for delivering through people. The first strategy is as explained in the diagram hire the right people. Employee satisfaction is to be seen as necessary but not sufficient for having high performing staff. Hiring the right people includes competing for applications from the best employees in the labor market and then selecting from this pool the best candidate for this specific job to be fulfilled. However, successful service organizations generally look beyond the technical qualification of applicants to access their customer and service orientation as well. In this first category, we have some sub tools or some sub factors for hiring the right kind of people. The first is compete for the best people. There is no such thing as perfect employee. Different positions are often are best filled by people with different skill sets, styles and personalities. Hire for service competencies and inclination. When we talk about Hiring for best kind of service competences, the employee should have service inclination. Service employees need two complementary capacities, service competences and service inclination. Service competences are the skill and knowledge necessary to do the job. In many cases, employees demonstrate competences by achieving particular degrees and certifications such as attaining a doctor of law degree and passing the relevant state bar examination for lawyers. In other cases, service competences may not be degree related but may instead relate to basic intelligence or physical requirements. Physical inclination means their interest in doing service related, work related, which is reflected in their attitude towards service and orientation towards service customers and fellow employees. Subcategory in this dimension is be the preferred employer. One way to attract the right kind or hiring the right kind of people or to attract the best people is known to be as the preferred employer in a particular industry or location. This means that a firm has to compete for talent market share. Furthermore, the compensation package cannot be below average. The next tool is tools to identify the best candidate. Excellent service firms use a number of approaches to identify the best candidate in the applicant pool. These approaches include interviewing applicants, observing behavior, 
conducting personality tests and providing applicants with realistic job purview the next strategy is to develop people to deliver service quality to grow and maintain a workforce that is customer oriented and focused on delivering quality an organization must develop its employee to deliver service quality as given by valerie zitman the first sub tool a factor in this is to train for technical and interactive skill if a firm has good people investments in training can yield outstanding results knowledgeable staff is a key aspect of service quality they must be able to explain product features effectively and position the product correctly technical skills for example can be working with accounting systems in hotels cash machine procedures in a retail store service firms also need training in interactive skills that allow them to provide courteous caring responsive and empathetic service the next sub tool in the second strategy is empower employees after selecting the right candidate or the service employees we need to train them well and the, after that the next step is to empower the frontline employees empowerment means giving employees the authority skills tools and desires to serve the customer well for many services providing employees with greater discretion enables them to provide superior service on the spot rather than taking time to get permission from supervisors empowerment looks to frontline staff to find solutions to service problems and to make appropriate decisions about customizing service delivery in the second strategy another tool is promoting teamwork the nature of many service jobs suggests that customer satisfaction will be enhanced when employees work as teams because service jobs are frequently frustrating demanding and challenging a teamwork environment will help elevate some of the stresses and strains employees who feel supported and feel that they have team backing them up will be better able to maintain their enthusiasm and provide quality service the third strategy in determining the delivery of service by the service employees is provided needed support system to be efficient and effective in their jobs service workers require internal support systems that are aligned with the needs to be customer focused for example a bank teller who is rewarded for customer satisfaction as well as for accuracy in bank transactions need easy access to update to up to update and up to date customer records a well staffed branch and a supportive customer oriented supervisor and back office team or staff the first tool in this third strategy is measure internal service quality one way to encourage supportive internal service relationships is to measure reward internal service by first acknowledging that everyone in the organization has a customer and then measuring customer perceptions of internal service quality an organization can begin to develop a strong internal quality culture the next is next tool in case of third strategy is provide supportive technology and equipment when customers do not have the right equipment or the equipment fails them they can be easily frustrated in their desire to deliver quality service to do your jobs effectively and efficiently service employees need the right equipment and technology the third tool in the third strategy is to develop service oriented internal processes to provide best support service personnel in the delivery of quality of service on the front line an organization's internal processes should be designed with customer value and customer satisfaction internal procedures must support quality service performance the fourth strategy is retaining the best people an organization that hires the right people and trains and develops them to deliver service quality and provides a needed support but also work to retain them employee turnover especially when the best service employees are the ones leaving can be very detrimental to customer satisfaction employee morale 
and overall service quality. The first tool in this fourth strategy is include employees in the company's vision. For employees to remain motivated and interested in sticking with the organization and supporting its goals, they need to share an understanding of the organization's vision. They will be motivated to some extent by their paychecks and other benefits, but the best employees will be attracted away to other opportunities if they are not committed to the vision and if that vision is kept secret from them. Treat employees as customers. If the employee feels valued and the needs are taken care of, they are more likely to stay with the organization. Number of initiatives are being done by organizations to benefit employees like child care resource and referral service, adoption assistance, health care and family leave. Next tool is measure and reward service performers, especially the strong service performers. If a company wants the stronger service performance to stay with the organization, it must reward and promote them. Employee retention is very important in the organizations because they are the asset of the organization. Reward system must value productivity, sales and some other dimension that can work against providing good service. System needs to be linked to the organization's vision and to outcomes that are truly important. Effect of employee behavior on service quality dimensions. Satisfied employee makes for satisfied customer. Unless service employees are happy in their jobs, customer satisfaction will be difficult to achieve. Both a client for service and a climate for employee well-being are highly correlated with overall customer perception of service quality. That is both service climate and human resource management experiences that employees have within their organization are reflected in how customers experience the service. Employees who feel they are treated fairly by the organization will treat the customers better, resulting in greater customer satisfaction. Customers' perception of service quality are affected by customer-oriented behavior of employees. All the five dimensions of service quality it as termed as rater, that is response reliability, responsiveness, assurance, empathy and tangibility can influence directly by the service employees. Delivering the service as promised, reliability is often totally within the control of frontline employees. Even in case of automated services such as ATMs, automated ticketing machines or self-service, behind the scenes, employees are critical for making all systems working properly. When services failed or errors are made, employees are essential for setting things right and using their judgment to determine the best course of action for service recovery. Frontline employees directly influence customer perceptions of responsiveness through their personal willingness to help and their promptness in serving the customers well. One employee may ignore your process. But if your presence is ignored, where another offers to help you search calls and other stores to locate the item. One may help you immediately and efficiently, whereas other may move slowly in accommodating even the simplest of requests. Assurance dimension of service quality is highly dependent on a boy's ability to communicate their credibility and to inspire the customer trust and confidence in them. The reputation of the organization will help, but in the end, individual employees with whom the customer interacts confirm and build trust in the organization or detract them from its reputation and ultimately destroy trust. For a startup or relatively unknown organization, credibility, trust and confidence will be tied up totally to the employee actions. It is difficult to imagine how an organization would deliver caring individualized attention to customers independent of its employees. Empathy implies that all the employees will play proper attention, listen, adapt and be flexible in delivering what customers need and also dealing with individual customer needs. Employee appearance, dress and, appear and their personality are important aspects of tangible dimensions of quality 
along with many other factors that are independent of service employee, that is a service facility, decor, brochure, singage, and so on. So all these five dimensions of service quality termed as rater, that is reliability, assurance, tangibility, empathy, and responsiveness, all five together build up a service quality dimension to be delivered by service employees to the customers. Customer-oriented service delivery. This approach places management at the top of the structure and the customers are at the bottom with customer contact employees just above them. If the organization's most important people are the customer, they should be at the top of the chart followed by those with whom they have contact. Such a view is more consistent with a customer-oriented focus. In effect, the role of top management changes from that of commanding to that of facilitating employees in the organization who are closest to the customer. Now we are trying to understand customers oriented service delivery and we have a manager under which we have two supervisor and both the supervisor are dealing with the frontline employees and it is the frontline employees who are dealing with the customers. So to understand this we need to understand how the organizations work. Unlike traditional organization chart where the manager is at the top. So students, let us now summarize what we have learned from this module. Often, service employees are the service and they represent the organization in customer's eyes. They affect the service quality perceptions to a large degree through the influence on the various five dimensions of service quality. It is the essential part to match what the customer wants and needs with the service employee's abilities to deliver. As service employees are the very important element of the organization and it is one of the most important uh, part or element of marketing mix of services. When we talk of services marketing, we talk of seven P's. And this employee, the people, the service provider is one of the very important element of services marketing mix because of the nature of role which is played by the service employees. And companies should use different strategies for integrating appropriate human resource practices so as to get the right kind of talent from the market and retaining the right kind of employees over a period of time for their success. Thank you so much.